Okay, clickbait aside, area is always positive. There's no such thing as negative area. Okay. With that being said, we, we've, we've talked about requiring F to be positive. All these integrals that we've done, area under the curve, well, area under the curve makes sense if the curve is positive. Well, if the curve is negative, like it is in this red section over here, we still want to talk about integrals. So this leads to the idea of signed area. So even though area is always positive, if we talk about something called signed area, we will call this section negative area because it's under the x-axis. It's not, area can't actually be negative, but we'd say negative signed area, but sometimes you just leave out the word signed. So let's give an example. So this green area over here is two units squared. Area is, you know, feet squared, meters squared, stuff like that. The signed area is positive. This red area is also two units squared, but we'll say that its signed area is negative. The total area, green plus red, is four. If you add up two and two, that's four. That's how much area is shaded here. But the total signed area is gonna be zero. Okay, so area is four, but signed area is gonna be zero. And this is useful because when we do talk more about uh, total change, well, change can be negative. Total change is area, but it's actually, turns out that total change and in integrals themselves are not actually just area, really they're signed area. So that's what we've got here, an updated definition. The old definition, still right. Still correct. There's nothing wrong with the old definition. But this new definition of definite integrals lets us talk about any function, positive or negative. So it's just a more powerful version of the second one, okay? I don't know. Think of your favorite anime. When the going gets tough, the main character just gets more powerful because they really want to. Okay, so definite integral assigned area. This is almost the same definition as before. The definite integral now of any function, not just a positive one. And actually there are still requirements for this, but we're not gonna go into them into this class. Um, the definite integral of a function over an interval is the signed area. Not just the area, but the signed area between F, the x-axis, and the limits of integration, A and B. It's written this, the exact same way. So if F is positive, this is our earlier definition. Otherwise, using the concept of signed area, the integral will be take the area above the x-axis and subtract the area below the x-axis. It's still the total net change. So if we go back here, we could actually write this with definite integral notation. Let's say this is our function f of x. Then this total signed area between zero and two, watch this, I'll write it in green. The total signed area between zero and two, oops, I forgot my dx, is two. Integrals represent signed area. The total signed area between x equaling, oh gosh, it's not between 0 and 2. It's actually between 0 and pi. This is a sine equation. The integral between x equaling pi, again, you can see this is where x is about 3.14. When x is pi and when x is 2 pi, that total signed area, <laughs> there's a really good pun here, because this function is actually sine of x and we're talking about signed area <laughs> it was not intentional but it's really funny <laughs> okay we're not talking about trig in this class ever so uh yeah this is the total signed area it's negative two so this integral is negative two even though the area is positive 
area is always possible, positive. The signed area and definite integrals are just signed area. Signed integral is negative. We could combine these to say all of the signed area starting from zero and going all the way to two pi. My gosh, it's been a while. DX. Area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis. Area above is 2. Area below is 2. This total signed area is 2 minus 2. The total signed area is 0. All right. That's what we're doing here. Quick example here and more examples in the next video. So we got a bug. Draw your favorite bug on this. Um... Do, 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 do. Wait. Um, okay. We got a bug. And this bug is walking right and left with the velocity given below. Again, velocity. That's a rate. Area of rates is total change. It's one of the big things of this section. That's why I'm saying it all the time. This bug is walking right, and it's walking left, and its velocity is shown here. This is not its position. This is now its velocity. We're thinking backwards, sort of. How far is the bug at 3 p.m. compared to where it was at 1 p.m.? We don't even know where it started. That's, again, a problem for another day. Oh, the leaf blower's on. What leaves are there in February? No clue. Anyway, so... I think I've talked about leaf blowers enough in this video in, in these videos. So how far is the bug? Oh, so we're looking at total change of distance. Right? Area under rate. And again, here where rate is velocity is going to be the total change, which is going to be the displacement. It's really technically displacement, which is different than distance. So all we need is the signed area. I keep adding words, I'm sorry. So before we said area under the curve, now we're, we've transferred this to signed area because we have all this positive area up here. This is how far the bug has moved to the right. Bug goes right. And then we have this negative signed area all over here, which is the bug going to the left. And the astute observer will notice that this yellow area and this yellow area are the same. So, how far has the bug actually gone? Well, between 2 and 3 p.m., it hasn't gone anywhere. Right? It's going to the right here. It's going to the left here. And the signed area is how much it's gone. Remember, this is the velocity. This says it's going at 10 feet per hour. Here. It stopped moving. Here. And by the time we're over here, it's going at 10 feet per hour the other way. Okay. So, this total displacement is going to be our signed area. What's our signed area? That's going to be the integral from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. of this velocity function. We're going to use dt because our variable is time. This is our signed area. Again, we got more examples in the next video. So, what is this total signed area? It's blue minus red. But again, we can take a shortcut. 
You could find blue minus red. That's a good exercise. Find all of blue and subtract red, see what you get. But remember that this blue in the yellow triangle and this red in this yellow triangle are the same. So the total signed area is actually just this blue area, which is just one hour. And it's going at 10 feet per hour the whole time. So it's just gone 10 feet to the right. Don't believe me? Let's look. What's this signed area right here? One half times the base, which is half an hour, times the height, just 10 feet per second. It's gone 2.5 feet right here. What about from 2.30 to 3? Well, it's one half the base, which is half an hour, times the height, which is 10. It's gone 2.5 feet to the left here. So in this yellow area, it went 2.5 feet to the right and then 2.5 feet to the left. It didn't change where it was. So really, what we would also have, right, is a plus 2.5 and a minus 2.5 if we really wanted to do this out the whole, the whole long way. And that's how signed area relates to definite integrals and how definite integrals relate to total change. The integral of a rate gives your total change. Got more examples coming right up? Let me know if you have questions. Have a good one.